Victor, can you hear me? Yes, Abdullah, you have something? Yes, yeah, Doctor, there is a known account in the classroom of Doctor Sadiq. Two accounts in known. Can you see it? Well, I'm I'm not I'm not responsible for this. I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him just now. Okay, okay, Doctor. I will uh, see that uh, yesterday. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Doctor Zanmo. Thank you. Good morning, students. Good morning. Okay, uh, you hear me now? Yes, it's clear, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, Abdullah, you mentioned something about uh, Dr. Saleh? Yes, there is two accounts in, known in, the, in, the, in the class. No, 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 no. By the way, uh, Dr. Saleh has no lecture with you. I mean, uh, with, with, with the third class. It's, it's my own lecture, and he is not having a lecture just now, okay? Doctor, I will not, not, not tell you about the lecture, but there is new account, account, two account in known, account in the class, account. Well, uh, tell me after we finish uh, the lecture about these things, and if, if there is a problem for that, we are going to solve it, okay? But today okay. we are going to have uh, a new material. So, uh, students, what I need you just to move to okay. chapter nine, chapter nine, teaching speaking. I want you just to follow me in the book because we are going to explain this chapter. Goals and techniques for teaching speaking. For most students, the main aim of the achievement of speaking skills depends largely on being able to listen and understand what is said to us. Alana will have difficulty speaking English if he, she does not receive the proper training and organized practice in both listening and speaking. Now, here in the first paragraph, we see the uh, relationship between listening and speaking. If you remember when we tackle chapter, uh, 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 I mean, uh, eight, which is related to uh, listening uh, skill, 
we notice the relationship between listening and speaking and without listening we cannot speak here again we emphasize this uh, idea the way that when we want just to speak we need just to listen this is one second we have something which is related to training what do you mean by training it means that there must be some sort of a training in both the skills with listening and with speaking with listening of course there are certain exercises certain rules to follow in order just to make the learner able to uh, achieve a proper listening and we discuss this in detail with chapter eight but here to draw the relationship between listening and speaking we have to know that uh, the student or the learner who has difficulty in listening of course it will be the same problem in speaking and that's why we have the word difficulty this is one second we have the word achievement i need you just to consider this word why to say uh, speaking is some sort of achievement here you have to know that speaking is a productive skill this is very important if we say speaking is a productive skill it means that uh, the learner the learner will achieve something will uh, develop his skill in the way that he will be able to use this skill effectively so without without proper training without drawing the relationship between listening and speaking we cannot uh, develop our ability to speak this is one second if we have difficulty in listening it means that it will be reflected in speaking skill any question about this point is it clear any question are clear okay now the goal of teaching speaking skills is communicative efficiency this is very important now if i ask you in the exam the goal of teaching speaking skill is communicative efficiency comment how can you comment on this point you have to consider when you are going to have CLT as a method for teaching the aim the aim uh, for teaching is speaking is just to what to consider the effectiveness of speaking what does it mean effectiveness of, of speaking it means that if I want just to teach students uh, uh, I mean any language here, speaking should achieve communication. It's not a speaking for the sake of speaking. It's speaking just to uh, uh, achieve the communicative aim. That is what? That is the interaction. This is one. Second, when you say learners should be able to make themselves understood using their current proficiency to the fullest. And this is very important. Here, we have efficiency and we have a proficiency, and these are very important to consider and to differentiate. Efficiency, it means that I'm using the skill, which is skill speaking, effectively. Effectively. What does it mean effectively? To achieve the aims behind this skill. This is one. Proficiency, what does it mean? It means my language ability my language ability in the way that uh, is uh, grammar considered uh, vocabulary considered pronunciation considered and the uh, uh, discourse level of language will be uh, again considered so what does it mean here it means that i'm utilizing utilizing my language ability to achieve to achieve the uh, 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 i mean the uh, the efficiency of uh, of of what of the skill so if if i want just to uh, be uh, uh, i mean competent 
or uh, um, having uh, the skill effectively, I utilize, make use of my language ability to the fullest. What does it mean to, to the fullest? I mean, I'm going to use it totally, everything that I have for the language, vocabulary, grammar, okay? Uh, uh, here, even in the, the, the uh, things that are related to discourse, all these things, uh, and uh, of course the pronunciation, all these abilities that I have in speaking. They, I mean students, they should try to avoid confusion in the message due to the faulty of pronunciation, grammar, or vocabulary, and to observe the social and cultural rules that apply in each communication situation. Ah, this is very important. Now, sometimes in, in your attempt to speak, you have some sort of failure. Maybe you have something wrong in grammar. You have something wrong in vocabulary. You have something wrong in pronunciation. This will affect on the message that you want to deliver to the, to, to the listener, because now you want just to speak. So if you want us to speak, it means that you are responsible to make others understand you, what you are talking, what you are speaking. So here, uh, once you are going to speak, your message, uh, I mean, the, the language that you use should be clear to others. And this is your responsibility. Sometimes you are going to be not understood because your grammar is wrong because your vocabulary is wrong, because uh, your, your pronunciation is wrong. And there are other uh, factors, if you remember, when you say paralinguistic factors, that is related uh, to the situation itself. Sometimes you use certain expressions that are not suitable to the situation, and this will cause some sort of misunderstanding. Is it clear or not? Just tell me. Yes. So here, if we say this, it means that we are responsible for all these factors. As speakers, as speakers, we have to be able to use grammar correctly, vocabulary correctly, pronunciation correctly, and to consider the paralinguistic factors in order to make our message clear, in order to make our speaking uh, uh, way uh, understood by others because we are not speaking to ourselves. We are speaking to others as listeners to us. So in this case, we are responsible for the failure of, 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 mis, uh, of, of the understanding or the misunderstanding. So this, this is the point that should be emphasized here. So if I ask you in the exam, okay, uh, uh, learners are responsible uh, for the message to be delivered when they speak, comment. What you are going to say, you are going to have this answer. This is one. Second, when we say how learners can avoid confusion, when they are developing their language abilities, in the way that they are not going to make mistakes here and there in grammar or in uh, vocabulary. Now, when I'm speaking the language with you, you can understand me. Why? Because I'm using grammar correctly. I'm using the vocabulary that you know. I'm using the vocabulary correctly. I mean, in its own position. And I'm uh, with the situation. What is the situation? We have a lecture. Here, I'm not speaking in, uh, with, with a grosser, for example, or with a butcher. No, I'm speaking with students. So I'm suiting my language to the situation that I am in. Okay. To help students develop communicative efficiency, and when you say uh, communicative efficiency, it means that using language effectively for the say for the cases of communication, that is a communicative efficiency. If I ask you about, uh, teachers can use a balanced activities approach, and I want you just to underline this in your book. Balanced activities approach. 
What does this mean? This approach believes that we have a process in speaking. That is what? Inputs, structured outputs, and communicative outputs. So what do we have? We have three stages. Three stages in the way that we are going to, uh, to, to have speaking or to train students how to speak. How many stages do we have? We have three stages. Just a minute, please. Well, uh, here, as we said, that we have, we have a balanced activities approach in the way that we have three stages to teach speaking skills. What are they? We have language input, structured output, and communicative output, and these are very important. These are stages that are to be done one after the other, it means that we have some sort of what? Of uh, gradation. We cannot move to communicative output without uh, structured output or language output. So they are coming one after the other. What do we have first? We have language input, then we have structured output, then we have communicative output. Communicative output. Now, what does each one mean? And these are very important. Language input comes in the form of the teacher's talk, and this is very important. Now, if we are considering what does this mean, it means that from where, from where we are going to have uh, the speaking, what is the starting point? The starting point is the teacher's talk. Okay, students are going to listen now. Students are listeners now. To add to the teacher's talk, okay? Listening activities, reading passages, and the language heard and read outside of the class. So these are what we call the resources, okay? I'm a learner. From where I got my resources to speak? First, from the teacher's talk, okay? Second, from the activities that are related to, to, to the class. We have reading passages. Reading passages are something to be done orally and students are going to listen. Okay, and the language here and read outside of class. Of course, it is not related only to, to the language which is used inside the class. Okay, it gives learners the material they need to begin producing language themselves. Language input may be uh, content-oriented or form-oriented. Before this point, let me explain uh, the point which is related to language input. Now, as we said, we draw a relationship between listening and speaking. Okay? So when, when we want just to speak, we are not going to, st uh, to start speaking uh, directly. Of course, we have to have resources to know, to know about language, to know about the styles, to know about the expressions that we are going to uh, speak, from where. So we start to speak as listeners. Uh, this is very important. We listen and we are going to get uh, things from other resources and then we are going to what? We are going to uh, speak. So here, Language input, it means the resources to help 
learn us to speak. One second. The resources that help learn us to speak. Clear? Yes, doctor. Students? Yes, doctor. Students? Yes, doctor. Yes, yes, doctor. Okay. Now, language input will be of two forms, content-oriented and form-oriented. And these are very important. We are going to explain them. Content-oriented input focuses on information, whether it is simple, uh, a simple weather report or an extended lecture or an, an academic topic. Uh, Content-oriented input may also include descriptions of learning strategies and examples of their use. Now, content-oriented simply means the information to be given, for example, in a lecture or, or in a lesson. So it is only the information. Now, what I'm telling you is the information which is related to chapter 9. This is what we call content-oriented. Clear? Clear or not, just tell me. Yes, doctor. Okay. Now we move to form-oriented. Form-oriented input focuses on the ways of using the language, okay, guidance from the teacher or another source on vocabulary, pronunciation, and grammar, linguistic competence, appropriate things to say in specific context, discourse competence, expectations of rate of speech, pause length, turn-taking, and other social aspects of language, use social linguistic competence and explicit instruction and phrases to use to ask for clarification and repair miscommunication strategic competence okay now with uh, with with the form oriented input here simply means how to use language for instruction what does it mean instruction for example a teacher is telling the student to open the door to close the door to, to come to the board to write something. These are instructions. Okay, this is one. Second, here it is not to give information. It is just to guide learners. So here, using using language, okay, using what the target language to uh, to instruct. This is what is required. This is what is required here, and this is what we call form and It means that the way that I use language as a teacher to instruct students. To, to uh, uh, for example, to uh, make students talk or make students stop talking. It means that I'm, I'm organizing the, the student talk in the way that I'm giving them instructions how to begin, how to make details, and how to finalize their own speech. So I'm going to, uh, to divide them or to, to make some sort of turns. Who is going to speak? And who is going to speak next? Who is going to finalize the... Uh, the speech, okay? So this is some sort of organization, okay? We are going to organize the, the, the teacher's talk, uh, th sorry, the student's talk in the way that we are able to give as teachers instructions to students by using the target language. So we are not giving them information as content uh, 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 oriented. We are using language for instructions. This is what uh, this is the difference between the two. Is it clear or not? Just tell me, Doctor. Can we consider it as uh, output for uh, for from there? Well, well, we are going to uh, make the difference, saying that with uh, content oriented, we are providing as teachers students with information. While with form oriented, we are using the target language that they learn to instruct them, you know, instruct them to, uh, to make some orders, to make some instructions for them, uh, uh, to what uh, to, to organize their activities inside a class. This is what we call form oriented. That is what using the language not to give information, but to guide them, to instruct them. This is clear, safe. Yes, Victor. Okay. <clears throat> In the presentation part of a lesson, an instructor combines content-oriented and form-oriented. Ah, this is this is of course what is done inside the class. 
Here, the teacher is not using one form. He's using them both. Content-oriented and form-oriented at the same time in the lesson. The amount of input that is actually provided in the target language depends on students' listening proficiency and also on the situation. Here, here we are uh, talking about stage number one. This is what language input. That is what students as listeners first. They are listening to their teacher when the uh, when the teacher is giving them information or to guide them. So if they are if they are good listeners they are going to be able to be good speakers if they are using their language abilities to understand what is said to them they are going to be able to speak effectively again depending on language abilities and the situation for students at a lower level or in a situation where a quick explanation on a grammar topic is needed an explanation in English may be more appropriate than one in the target language. One second. Here, when we are talking about uh, uh, students who are weak, you know, weak. When we, st when we say lower level, it means weak students. They can understand, okay, uh, uh, the topic here. In the native language, or let me say the instructions in the native language, quicker than what the target language. For example, when the teacher is instructing them in, for example, in Arabic, if it is their native language, for weak students, they can understand more quicker than uh, in, in using the target language. That is related to their level. And this is the point that we want to emphasize. The much you, you develop your level, the better you will be when you are going to use the language. So students of higher level, good students, excellent students, they, they don't have a problem when we have uh, form-oriented or uh, uh, content-oriented. Because both of them will be given in the target language. But with weak students, it is difficult for them to understand in the target language. But they can understand the quicker when uh, the native language is It means that their level in language is weak. Up to this point, is it clear? Because we are going to finish with language inputs. This is stage number one. That is, students are not doing anything. They are only listeners. Any question about that? Any question? Students? No, doctor. It's clear. Yeah. Now, we move to the second stage now. That is the structured outputs. Okay. What does this mean and what is going on? And I want you just to, uh, I mean, consider or imagine that all these things are happening inside a class. First of all, the teacher is talking. That is what language input. Now, students are speaking, but how? Structured output focuses on uh, correct form. In structured output, students may have options for responses but all of the options require them to use the specific form or structure that the teacher has just introduced. This is very important. Now, we move to another stage in which the students are going to speak, but how? Their speech will be restricted, limited, with what? With the teacher's guidance, with the teacher's instructions, with the teacher's uh, observation their uh, participation in using language will be limited uh, so they are going to speak what uh, what is required so they are not free to speak whatever they like Structured output is designed to make learners comfortable producing specific language uh, items. What does it mean, specific language items? 
consider that the, the teacher is introducing present simple tense as a grammatical, uh, 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 I mean, uh, topic to be uh, to be given to, to students. A student's speech will be limited to provide examples about the pattern uh, that the teacher is giving. So, so in this case, the, the teacher the teacher is going to decide what the, the, the student is going to say. So in this case, if we are talking about uh, uh, specific language items, it means that the language that the students are speaking will be limited, specific, to what is required from the teacher. Uh, structured output is designed to make learners comfortable producing specific uh, language items recently introduced. What does it mean recently uh, introduced? It means that the teacher is explaining uh, uh, a topic just now. And uh, the teacher is, uh, is going to train their students. Teachers are training their teachers just now. So he's explaining just now and he is uh, asking the students to provide examples uh, i mean immediately after explanation this is what we call recently introduced sometimes in combination with the previously learned items what does it mean here here it means that if i want just to uh, uh, have some sort of participation on the part of students as a teacher, I can make them uh, uh, provide me with examples from the material that I taught them just now or from the material that I introduced yesterday, for example. This is what we call previously, uh, uh, I mean, uh, introduced items. Teachers often use structured output exercises as a transition between presentation stage and the practice stage. And this is very important. I want you just to underline this in the book. Transition. Here, a structured output will be considered as a transition. Transition. What does it mean, transition? It means that it is in the mid between two stages. What are the stages? The, uh, the, the inputs and the communicative outputs. So it would, it would be in between. It is uh, to make students able to speak freely. So it is, it is uh, the stage that make them able to. That is what, to make them ready to, to prepare them to be, uh, I mean, uh, free to speak whatever they like without instruction. So it is what stationary, that is what a transition stage between inputs and communicative output. We move to page uh, 63. Textbook exercise also often make good structured output practice activities. Okay. Now, when we, when we talk about exercises, of course, when we talk about the textbook, uh, we have a material and we have exercises, okay, these exercises would, would be considered as what? A structured output, because they are not uh, the student's genuine, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, language. It is what? It is found in the textbook, and students will train. So they are not their own language, the language that is found in the book, and they are going to train. So this is what we call a structured output activities that are related to the exercises that are found in the book students are going to try to speak using them but they are not their own genuine language in communicative output now we have another stage stage number three we say language said language uh, input structure output. now we have communicative output with communicative output, what do we have? In communicative output, learners' main purpose is to complete a task, such as obtaining information, developing a, a travel plan, or creating a video. To complete the task, they may use the language that the, the instructor has just presented, but they also may draw uh, 
on any other vocabulary, grammar, and communication strategy that they know. This is very important. So with communicative output, the students are going to use their own vocabulary, their own grammar, their own style. So he to be engaged in a, a, a way that they are language, not the language that is to be found in the textbook, not the language that is said by the teacher. Okay. Uh, in communicative output activities, the, uh, the criterion of success is whether the learner gets the, the, the message across. Accuracy is not a consideration unless the lack of it interferes with the message. This is very important. Now, with the uh, output, uh, 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 let me say, uh, stage, that is the communicative output, here students are not required just to be accurate unless, and this is something conditioned, unless if there is misunderstanding when they are speaking and their speech is not understood. Because in this case, we don't have communication. If uh, their speech is not understood, they are not going to communicate effectively. So they are free, yes, but their freedom will be con uh, uh, conditioned by making their message clear. It is not just to be perfect 100%, but at least to, to achieve some sort of what, of a clear understanding when they are going to use language. Up to this point, any question? Yes, yes, doctor. Yes, Abdullah. Yes, doctor. He says uh, to complete the task, you uh, the learners must must be follow the way of the instructor or the uh, materials, and by with considering that take their own vocabulary. And yes, uh, yes, yes, what, yes, what uh, yes, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. Here, to, to make things clear to you, when we are talking about, when we are talking about uh, 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 the instructions, it means that not the language to be instructed, but the topic that they are going to speak will be what will be considered by the teacher, but their language will be free. What does it mean here? The teacher, because they are not speaking in the vacuum. There is a lesson and there is a topic to, to talk about. So in this case, uh, uh, their topic will be restricted, but their language will not be restricted. You have the point now, Abdullah? So here, the restriction is not related to the language. They are free to use the vocabulary that they like, to use the, the grammar that they like, to use uh, uh, the style that, that they like, but within the topic which is to be discussed recently by the teacher because still it is a lesson. Still there is something related to the organization of the lesson itself. You mean, Dr. Yeah. Uh, focuses on the topics, not the, not the way of... The topic, the yes. Okay, okay. You see now, Abdullah, you speak freely now. I'm going to give you, uh, let me say, an immediate example. Now you are using language freely. But, uh, of course, you are not using the language in the vacuum. You are talking about CLT, and we are talking about Chapter 9. So the topic will be limited, but the language that you use will be not limited. This is the idea. Yes, yes, Doctor. Thank you. Doctor, in well, the, in the... Yes, yes, please. Say. Yes, Doctor, about the accuracy, it is not considered. It means that the fluency... Would, would, you, would, you fluency please raise, would you please raise your voice? Uh, you, say that, uh, you say that accuracy is not consideration. It is... Uh, and what about the fluency? It is consideration? Of course, uh, the aim behind speaking uh, is what? Is, is to get the fluency. And that's why when we talk about accuracy here, we are not considering accuracy, uh, uh, um, uh, I mean, um, uh, perfectly, but we are considering the way that we are going to uh, uh, speak fluently. This is the idea. Well, uh, by the way, uh, students, 
um, uh, since I'm uh, giving uh, the lecture here in the department, um, maybe for one minute and two minutes, I, I may have some, let me say, pauses. And that's why, because we are uh, having some sort of uh, arrangement here. So um, I want you just to excuse me for this. I'm going to stop now for a minute or more just to see what is going on and then I'm coming back, okay? So just wait. <clears throat> okay, uh, students. Yes, Doctor, with you. Are you with me now, just now? Yes, Doctor. Yes, yes. Okay. In communicative output, the learner's main aim or main main aim purpose or is to complete the task, as we said, uh, such as obtaining information, developing a travel plan, or creating a video to uh, complete the task. They may use the language that they, uh, the instructor had just presented, but they also may draw on any other vocabulary, grammar, and communication strategies that they know. In communicative output activities, the criterion of success is whether the learner gets the message across. Accuracy is not a consideration unless the lack of it interferes with the message. 
In everyday communication, spoken exchanges take place be because there is some sort of information gap between the participants. The communicative output activities involve a similar real information gap. In order to complete the task, the students must reduce or eliminate the information gap. In these activities, language is a tool, not an end in itself. This paragraph is very, very, very important. Here we have something related to information gap. What does this mean? You know, when we are talking about speaking, we are talking about what is happening or what is going on in a real life situation. Consider a dialogue. What is a dialogue? A dialogue simply is a question and answer. With a question and answer, it means that something that I have and something the other side uh, has, and we exchange information. I ask him and he asks me. So this is what we call information gap. That is the information that I want just to fill from the other and the information that I'm going to have from the other uh, side, that is what the other speaker. So when we have an activity in a lesson, we have to assume, this is very important, assume what we are going to have in a real life situation. As we have information gap in everyday uh, 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 life, uh, uh, let me say, uh, situations or dialogues, we have to create this as an activity in what? In a lesson. So here there must be something which is incomplete. Suppose that we have a class and we divide the class into two groups, group A and group B, and they are going to interact. What group A have is incomplete information, and with group B Again, they have incomplete information. And with this, you have to consider that when interaction happens, okay, this information gap will be filled. A will fill B and B will fill A. Get the point now? So this is what we want to do as teachers, to create an activity in which we have information gap to assume what, we, what what is going on really in in what in everyday life situation as we as we chat in 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 a form of dialogues okay outside the class we are going to do it inside the class the same thing clear up to this point about information gap what does it mean uh, yes doctor you mean uh, oh, okay. yes, so uh, here here as, yes here as here, as teachers, we want just to say that the aim behind the speaking is just what? It's just to have interaction and communication, not the language itself. So the idea here, we need just to make students able to use the language naturally for the sake of communication, rather than to consider the language itself. The language would be a tool, not the aim. Now, we are using language, both you and me, for the sake of what? For the, the sake of giving a lecture. So the, 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 the language will be a tool to deliver what I have to you, and then you are going to discuss me using the language. So you are using the language, and I'm using the language, not for the sake of language itself but for the sake of mutual understanding. Clear? Clear? Yes. Uh, you mean uh, cover all information missing by one group and told uh, the other groups? I mean... Uh, uh, Fatma, 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 I want you just to imagine with me. We have, we have a lesson, and we have a teacher, and we have students. We have an activity for a speaking skill. This activity should be based on information gap. What does it mean, information gap? That is incomplete 
incomplete information. Okay, why? Because with incomplete information, we are going to achieve interaction. Some will ask, the other will answer, and they are going to exchange roles. The speaker is not always the speaker, and the listener is not always the listener. Yes. But if they have complete information, how can they chat? How can they ask one another? How can they respond to one another? Got the point now, Fatma? Yes, so, uh, as teachers, our role, our role is to design, to design an activity in which we are going to have what? Interaction. Interaction. Communication. This is because this is what is really happening when you are using language. Now, when we are using what? The native language, by the way. Native language, when you use native language, this is the form of native language. Incomplete uh, uh, information. And that's why you ask and the other is respond. And you are going to respond to others' uh, question. This is yes, got the point now. So using yes. language for communication, not for, for language itself. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay. Now, in a balanced activities approach, the teachers uh, use the teacher uses a variety of activities from these different categories of input and output learners at all proficiency levels, including beginners, uh, benefit from the variety. It is more motivating and it is also more likely to result in effective language learning. And by the way, here when we talk about variety, this is very important. Uh, uh, as teachers, we are not required to give one activity. Give them different activities, different uh, tasks, different exercises. Why? Because you see now your students will not be the same level. Some are good, others are weak, others are in the mid. So if we, if, if we restrict our, uh, 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 let me say, teaching into one activity, some students will feel that they don't have the chance to, uh, to, uh, I mean, to, to learn or to train because some activities uh, um, are difficult for them to apply. So give as much as uh, as you can with different activities to suit the different levels of uh, uh, students. And of course, with different uh, activities, you are going to again to uh, to develop different language abilities for them. One activity for vocabulary, one activity for grammar, one activity for speaking, uh, I mean, styles, other activities for pronunciation. So all in all, students are going to develop them all. Comparatively with one activity to develop one thing, uh, and this will be difficult for them. Speaking is best taught by three-stage procedure. These are very important. Let us see. Eliciting stage. Eliciting. What do you mean by eliciting? It is designed to help the teacher develop the teaching skill of not talking too much while at the same time giving learners guided practice and stimulating them to speak. Okay. Do you know the meaning of elicit? Do you know the illicit? Illicit, Motivate. the word illicit. Do Motivate. you know what does it mean? Who can tell me? What is the meaning of illicit as a word? Yes, doctor, it means uh, motivating. Yes. Uh -huh. yes, to motivate, to illicit, to motivate. What does it mean here? Uh, while is asking about the page, we are, we are on page 63. Uh, the last paragraph, the stages. 
Here, when we are talking about eliciting, what is going on? The teacher at the beginning of the lesson is trying to, to encourage students to talk. For example, he's beginning. Okay, students, good morning. Uh, um, uh, can you see uh, the dialogue here in uh, in this unit or in this lesson? Okay, who can tell me uh, wh wh what is going on in the picture beside the dialogue? Uh, uh, wh who are uh, talking in this dialogue? So uh, the teacher is uh, is trying to ask the questions to motivate the students to talk, to encourage them to talk. This is what we call eliciting. This is the first stage that the teacher is going to motivate students to talk, to ask simple questions, introductory questions for the lesson that he is presenting. Clear? Clear? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, a teacher should aim to develop the student's confidence in responding to specific questions or problems. Here we have a very important word, confidence. Confidence. You know, in speaking, there is a psychological factor. You know a psychological factor? You know what does it mean, psychological factor? Students. Exactly. That is, students fear, you know, fear, get frightened. They are afraid to speak. They feel afraid. They feel scared. They feel frightened. They feel that they are going to make a mistake. So here, your role as a teacher to implant, you know, implant, implant confidence make students confident to speak how by giving them praises okay good very good nice yes i'm sure you you can do it it's okay that's fine you, you see now these phrases will encourage the students and create some sort of confidence that the students can do and instead of saying no this is wrong you are you are not a good student. You, are, you see now, this will not uh, encourage students to speak. So your role as a teacher to create some sort of, of confidence inside the students, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, in the way that they are able to do something. Unless you do that, they, they never speak. So try just to use the phrases just like this. Very good, very nice, it's okay, very fine. Well, I'm sure you can do it. It's okay. You are a good student, just like this. Okay? So with this, you are going to encourage students to speak. And this is, as I said, this is a psychological factor. If I ask you in the exam, okay? Confidence is a psychological factor in developing uh, speaking skill, comment. This will be the answer. Yes, this will be the answer. This, this will be the, the answer. It the is a psychological the... factor in the way that you are going to encourage students to speak because uh, uh, there is a fear to make mistakes. Okay? So in this case, you are going to make him confident and say things even if they are, uh, if they are somehow incorrect. But it will be what? It will be uh, uh, something encouraging to do more. It doesn't mean that it is, uh, it is uh, to be said this way and that's it. Clear now? Clear why to, to, to consider that uh, uh, confidence is a, a, a psychological factor to develop speaking skill? This is very important, by the way. Very important. Encourage them. Fatma, you have something? Yes, Doctor. I say by encourage them. Did yeah, encouraging them? them by what? By having phrases, you know, phrases for encouragement. How to encourage? By to praise them, praise, you know, praising. 
Yes. Okay. Fine. Very good. Yes. You are a good student. Yeah. Okay. That's very fine. Great. It's okay. Well done. Okay. Just like these things. <clears throat> this is the beginning of the development of fluency. You see now, this is just to emphasize. A teacher who can elicit or draw out appropriate verbal language from students rather than tell them what to say. By the way, you know verbal language? That is language use. Verbal language. That is uh, uh, communication through using language, verbal language get students more uh, uh, actively involved, increases their motivation and enhances their learning satisfaction. When eliciting functional language, it is important that learners sound, okay, uh, right. Therefore, they need to learn to use appropriate words, stress and intonation. It is also suitable to teach and elicit uh, suitable responses and that students are aware of register whether the functional language is formal natural and formal without this uh, awareness learners often sound too formal or, or too friendly eliciting can be done in the following ways you see now you know language has some sort of uh, uh, let me say levels we are, as teachers, responsible to teach students how to use language appropriately. What does it mean? To tell them in which way you are go they are going to be formal and in which way they are going to be informal. You see, formal and informal, it is related to language register. What does it mean here? When a student is talking with a teacher, it is a formal talk. And there is a, a certain expressions to be used in formal language. For example, excuse me, please. Would you mind? Would you, would you please? Just like this. Okay? And with, even with a greeting. Say, for example, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening. It's okay. But when, it's, when, when the student is saying hi, hi is not to be said by what? By formal uh, language. This is, this is just to, uh, to be done among friends. So as teachers, we have to teach students how to use language formally and informally. So in speaking, this is very important. Students should be able to know in which situation they are formal. And in which situation they are not be form, uh, informal. This is one. Second, students should should uh, be taught how to use intonation, how to use stress, because this is related to speaking skill in a spoken form. Intonation is very important to recognize the question from the answer. When I say he is coming. This is what? This is affirmative sentence, but when I say he's coming, it will be a question. So in this case, uh, students do not know, but you have to tell them as teachers. You have to tell them how they can use intonation, stress, and how to be formal and informal. Sarah, is asking about the page. We are on page 64. So is it clear now with formal and informal intonation and, uh, uh, and stress? This is, this is how to use language appropriately. This is our task as a teacher to tell students how to be formal, how to be informal, how to use intonation, how to use uh, stress and something like that. Again, what are the ways? Let us see the ways that we are going to uh, help students to, to, uh, to uh, I mean, apply these rules. Asking questions, give instructions, uh, require verbal interaction, use real object, 
use visual aids, uh, give definition, use synonyms and antonyms, use uh, gestures and mimes, uh, use prompts, cues and questions. What are these things? These are examples to teach students how to use language appropriately. You have to put this as a title. If I ask you in the exam, what are the ways to teach students? how to eat, you are going to mention them as examples as ways okay yes we move to page 65 okay students yes okay page 65 Drilling in the drills tend to become mechanical and meaningless, eliciting responses in short period, three to five minutes, is one way to make certain that, uh, that language structure being practiced means something to the students. You should uh, also give the cue of, or the model sentence before you ask a particular student to respond. This is, this is just to tell what is going on in this stage. Of course, we are still in, in the stage number one, that is eliciting. Your role as a teacher to, to what? To minimize, you know, the time for eliciting. Eliciting will not take, uh, uh, I mean, too much time. Three to five minutes, it will be okay to prepare them for the lesson. That is what we call a refreshment, okay? So do not give too much time for, uh, for eliciting. Three, and if you are asking something, okay, after eliciting, give them an example to know what is going on, and then they are going to respond to you uh, accordingly. Uh, do not uh, point to one student and then give the cue or, or, or the, the, uh, the prompt. Being able to use a foreign language accurately can be very satisfying, and this cannot be done without practice, okay? So here, as, uh, uh, let me say, uh, a rule, what you are going to do as a teacher, when you are going to give a certain uh, topic, do not focus on uh, students to do it, no. Uh, I mean, look at them generally because it will not be targeted into, into one student or a specific, uh, uh, I mean, type of students. No, this will be given to students generally and they are going to recognize these things later. And then you are going to give them uh, uh, an example to practice and they are going to use uh, uh, a pattern that you have and they are, they are going to provide you with examples later. <clears throat> Activity should be varied and games should be used in a break, uh, to, to break boredom. Of course, uh, as um, uh, a language teacher, you have to get rid of boredom to make them feel bored. You have to make your lesson as active as possible. Make them ready uh, uh, at, at any time. Do not, uh, uh, I mean, make them feel that you are, uh, uh, let me say, uh, too far. You have to be close to them, feel them, and make them feel you in the, uh, in the, in, in the sense that they are going to what? They are, they are going to fo follow you all the time. And with this, you have your own, own techniques by using games and other activities to what? To get rid of boredom. Now, let us move to another uh, stage. That is what? Repetition, which is related to the second stage. By the way, it is not numbered in the, in the book. Stage number one, uh, eliciting, is stage number two. That is in the mid of page 65. Repetition, which is used to help learners. This is stage number two, after eliciting. Uh, repetition. Uh, which is used to help learners improve their eco-questions. 
which means making statements that they have to be transformed into questions by, uh, 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 I mean, by uh, a change in uh, intonation. You know, eco question, eco question, that is what? A sentence, uh, I mean, uh, by itself can be work as a statement or as a question, uh, as I said earlier. For example, he is coming. And I may say he is coming. So by changing the intonation, the statement will be changed into what? Into question. And in this case, I am able to make them uh, do a question without changing the structure. It's, it's by changing the intonation. And this will be done by repetition. When I say uh, he is coming, and I'm, I'm going to say, repeat after me. This is a repetition. Repeat after me. So I say, he is coming. And all students will say, co uh, I mean, uh, chorally, I mean, in collection, they are saying, he is coming. And with this, they, they learn how to use intonation to make a question by using the intonation rather than changing the structure. Clear? Yes. Students. Okay, so this stage is called repetition. And I want you just to consider why the teacher is saying repeat after me. Why not just say repeat with me? Who can tell me? This is a question to you. Repeat after me, not repeat with me. Who can tell uh, me? Yes, or maybe uh, the students will pronounce uh, some words like wrong. They will repeat after you because you pronounce this right. So they can pronounce the words right. Very good. Very good, Yasemin. Now, I'm going to say it in a different way. When I say repeat after me, it means that the teacher is going to listen to the students and to consider what kind of, of mistakes that they are going to do. So there is an evaluation and that's why I repeat after me, it will be a period for the students to, uh, 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 I mean, produce something and the teacher is going to consider what are the mistakes. So repeat with me, it means that both of them are speaking at the same time. While the repeat after me, it means that there is uh, uh, I mean, a period of time for the teacher to consider what is going on by students, and then he will discover what, what mistakes that are happening here and there. And again, he can consider who is speaking really and who is not. Clear now? Clear? Students? Yes, that, uh, excuse oh. me. Yes. Can we say that uh, when when I say repeat after me, I want from the students to imitate my way to speaking. It's not imitation. It's not imitation, by the way. We we have, for example, an audio. Abdullah. Yes. For example, you have MP3. You have MP3, MP3 for students. And they are what? We say, repeat after the audio, for example. So you have a model. But as a teacher, you are not going to be a model. So you are not going to ask them to repeat uh, your own way of pronunciation. But you need to discover the mistakes that are to be done here and there. You have a point now? Yes, yes. So this is the idea. <clears throat> Excuse me, can you repeat it, yes. please? Can I what? Repeat it. Okay, this is a practical example about repeat after me. Here, when we are talking about uh, the, the difference between repeat with me and repeat after me, here in uh, uh, the, the first case, the, the teacher is having a time to check and evaluate the student's performance. Performance. Okay? And he is going to discover the mistakes that are happening here and there. 
but when he is saying, uh, I mean, repeat with me, it means that there is no time for him to check. Because both of them are going to speak the same time. Clear? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> uh, here again we have example question and answer, simple sub substitution. You know simple substitution, what does it mean? Simple substitution. If I say, for example, uh, a pattern for, uh, for uh, present continuous tense. Or I say, he is playing, and the students they are going to say, he is playing. I'm going to say they, I change only the subject, and they are going to say they are playing. You got the point now? She is playing, he is playing. I'm going to what? To change uh, one word, and they are going to what? To, uh, to repeat after changing. He is playing, he is playing, okay. Then I say they, and they are going to say they are playing. I say he, she. She is playing, and then I'm going to say I. They are going to say I am playing. You get the point now? So I change one element of the sentence, and they are going to repeat by changing and changing the pattern as a whole. Because with I, I cannot use is, and with they, I cannot use is. So this is what we call simple substitution. You know, su su substitution, that is what? Uh, uh, place, I, I place something instead of the other. Placing, you know, placing, that is, I change the subject by another form. And they are going to change the sentence to be repeated considering the, the grammatical rule. He with is, but they with are, I with am. Here, this is what we call simple substitution. Any question? Any question? Students? No, Doctor. Yes, Fatima? No, no, thank you, Doctor. Okay. Combining sentences, chaining, which is used when a phrase or a sentence causes difficulty because of its pronunciation or length. Chaining, you know chain? Chaining, that is what? Using, using uh, uh, I mean, elision or uh, assimilation because you cannot say, you cannot say the sentence in full length, okay? You know, for example, when I say she tells strangers, she tells strangers, I, I, it is difficult to say she tempts strangers. She tempts strangers. She tempts strangers. So I'm using elision, reduction, assimilation, because it is difficult to say it, uh, I mean, in a long length. Chaining, this is what you call chaining. Okay? And then we have example. You see now an example at the end. If, uh, if I'd known, you see now the students are repeating. If I'd known, you were here, you were here. You see now? So here, you see, there is a mistake. If you check uh, at the top of uh, page 66. Page 66. Now the teacher is saying something, and the, uh, the student is saying something wrong. Who can consider? Who can tell me where 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 is where is the wrong word in the students in the students' uh, uh, repetition? Who can tell me? By the way, it is very clear. Look at the example which is found uh, on page sixty-six of the top on the top. Consider what is the teacher is saying and what is the students is saying. There is something between where and where. Very good, very good. Here, where as auxiliary, 
but the student is saying where as a question word wh question another point now this is the idea clear so here you can discover that there are mistakes when you say repeat after me or you can consider you can consider that uh, this is in a spoken form you you can consider this by asking a student what is where if he's saying w h e r e it means that he is wrong you might say how can we discover that it is wrong if it is in a spoken form of course by asking the student what is where if he's saying that this is an auxiliary it would be okay and if the student is saying that it is a WH word, it, w it, will be the, uh, it will be an evidence that the student is co um, committing a mistake. Clear? Clear? Students? Yes, yes, doctor. Okay. Now we move to uh, uh, the third stage. We said eliciting, number one. Number two, repetition. We have a third stage. Okay, that is uh, on page 66. Developing oral fluency. Okay, this is stage number three. And these stages, as we said, it, it is done gradually. First we elicit, then we have repetition, and then we are going to make them free to talk. Your students want to speak English, but most of them know neither how to improve that is spoken English, nor what activities and practice really help them achieve aims. Teachers, therefore, need to be clear about the goals and techniques that promote fluency in speaking and practice uh, oral activities. First of all, decide whether the speaking activity promotes fluency or accuracy. You expect to develop learners' fluency if they are monitoring things like accurate grammar and grammatical uh, use, the precise and appropriate vocabulary, choice or correct pronunciation. Okay. Now, your students want just to speak, but they are not sure that uh, their, their way of speaking is to be checked according to accuracy or to, according to fluency. This is related to the activity that you are going to design as a teacher to develop each, uh, each of these things, whether uh, uh, accuracy or fluency. So, with, for example, with the grammar, of course, when you are going to provide them with examples and you are going to ask them to, to give examples, of course, it, it correctness will be uh, considered. But if you are going to design activity in which we have communication that is related to fluency, even they are, if they have, have uh, I mean, some mistakes here and there in the grammar, it will be tolerated. This is one. Second, as a teacher, when you are going to provide a lesson, this lesson, this lesson should be, uh, I mean, uh, designed in the way that uh, the teachers uh, should uh, should um, relate their own vocabulary to the topic itself. To the topic itself. So uh, the, the topic the topic will lead the the, the students to uh, use the vocabulary that is related or suitable to the to the topic itself. Suppose that the topic that you have is about travel journeys. This topic will suggest something just like, uh, uh, for example, flights, airplane, airports, okay, hotels, okay. But uh, we we don't have uh, vocabulary which is related to, for example, pencil or or uh, or books or library. These things are not related to the situation. So in this case, the topic that you are going to organize as a teacher for students to, uh, to uh, uh, I mean, to speak in certain activities, you are going to leave them uh, to relate their own vocabulary store to the uh, to the topic itself. Clear now? So uh, to to uh, 
uh, to decide earlier uh, uh, the way that students speak you have to give them a topic this topic will uh, make them able to relate their own vocabulary to the topic itself yep, right now so this is your role as a teacher and by the way i'm emphasizing your role as a teacher in each stage in eliciting in repetition and in uh, developing fluency that is what students are free to talk but they are uh, they are uh, uh, let me say having an idea about which topic that they are going to talk about to relate their own language abilities to the teaching situation okay the teacher can prepare free speaking activities these are very important if i ask you an exam what are the free speaking activities that student teachers design for for oral fluency the third stage choose high interest topics pre-teach uh, uh, which means introduce and explain essential vocabulary items, structure, and functions. Stimulate interest by using visual, uh, uh, displaying uh, newspaper headlines or suggested writing. Personalize the topic by rela uh, relating it to students' experience and background. These are your ways or activities that you are going to add to, uh, uh, I mean, follow or uh, organize for your students to speak here the topic sometimes it is suggested by the textbook itself so you, you are going to find yourself as a teacher uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, um, uh, fixed to, to, to this topic or if you, you have this ability or let me say this responsibility as a teacher or a flexibility as a teacher to design a topic from your own, which is related to their own interest. You may say, okay, students, we are talking now about the football match of yesterday uh, between uh, Real Madrid and Barcelona, for example. If you check that your students is, uh, is having an interest for this topic, you are going to encourage them by, you, uh, by choosing the topic that they are able to speak on it they feel it they, uh, and they feel interested when they they speak about it you have point now so choosing the topic sometimes it is related to you as a teacher and sometimes you feel that you have to be with the uh, textbook that you have which is uh, having the topics that you want just to add to design uh, a speaking activity for when we say the word personalize, and this is very important, personalize the topic. What does it mean? To personalize the topic, it means that uh, make the students express his own ideas about the topic itself. Remember, uh, in, in the first course, when I taught you essay, do you remember the argumentative essay when I suggested the topic for you to, to talk about? If you remember about early marriage, about illegal immigration yes. to Europe, you remember these things. These are these are topics that you are, you you can you can personalize personalize your experience about because you are talking about your opinion. So to, to personalize it means to give the, the the students the ability to express his own opinion. Uh, if you ask the, the, the students, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Well, what is your opinion about this? Okay, so here, here, you are going to make them able to express their own ideas. Set the scene for discussion by arranging the uh, chair for face-to-face -face interaction. By the way, there is some sort of technical, you know, technical organization. Uh, do you know how to organize the class uh, according to CLT? Make circles, you know, small circles. I mean, the, the, the seats, you know, the seats. The seats for the students should be uh, done as a circle, not as one after the other, not as rows, you know, not rows. 
uh, uh, you see, uh, uh, these things will help them just to have an interaction, okay? To make them sit face to face, not uh, one after the other or one uh, before the other, just like this. So this is what we call technical arrangement for speaking skill activities. Uh, you have to consider, uh, students, that uh, with the speaking skill, we are not going to leave any page. So I believe that we are going to divide uh, this chapter into two parts. Uh, I'm about to finish this uh, part number one, and part number two will be for the coming lecture. So uh, beginning with page 67, we have again the, uh, the, the completion of the uh, uh, free speaking uh, activities, organize the time and plan for the uh, lesson well, make a recording for feedback and for the correction of the concern or uh, errors by using an audio cassette or video. Okay, you see, uh, as I said, uh, we have technical arrangement for uh, free speaking activities in the way that the teacher is uh, doing something that is what recording maybe note taking or to record by using cassettes okay by using audio, uh, audios to what what to what, what to record uh, the lesson activity because uh, the, the teacher may forget uh, the uh, the errors that are made by the by, by the students so the record will help him to replay uh, the activity itself and to what to, uh, uh, I mean, to uh, have it another time to discover what are the mistakes that are done here and there by students to correct them later on. Because the free, uh, act, uh, I mean, speaking activity, it is related to fluency, but accuracy should be done in later stages. Uh, and with this, I believe that we should stop at uh, page 67, developing speaking activities. We are going to do it uh, next time. Uh, and with this, I need uh, any student just to uh, say if any, uh, uh, let me say, topic is not understood or to uh, pose any question or comment for uh, the material that is taken recently. So, any question? Yes, doctor. Yes, please, Abdullah. Yes, doctor. Con uh, concern, errors, uh, doctor, this activity for the fluency. Now we are divided the uh, fluency and the accuracy, and this is the uh, activity for the fluency. Ah, okay. This activity for fluency, but but uh, here later on, the teacher should uh, discover the mistakes that are done here. In the fluency activity, he is making students uh, uh, using the language uh, uh, as uh, as they know. But of course, there are mistakes still there are there not. But uh, these mistakes should be discovered. How? By having a record, even even. Uh, 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 let me say the mistakes that are done should be discovered and should be corrected later on. It doesn't mean in the same time of the activity. Yes, so accuracy yes, should be yeah. considered, but later on, not uh, not in the uh, in the time of the activity itself. Any other question? Any other question? Yes, doctor. Yes, uh, Fatma. Uh, about the previous lecture. Previous lecture uh, uh, about listening, listening activity, yes, yes, listening. Yes, i uh, oh, sorry, listening uh, skill. Yes. yes. What's uh, wrong with in, it? In page uh, fifty-one. Uh, in the middle of the page. Fifty-one. The middle of the page. Yes. Uh, we say listening. The Yes, yes. Uh, the listening, button, yes. Yeah, listening involve listening involve a center, a person, uh, a radio or television or what? Uh, no. Uh, and when we say bug tracking of looking ahead, what does it mean here? 
What is it? What is it? Backtracking. What is it? Uh, in the N four line. In the same paragraph or line. The same paragraph. At the end of the line, backtracking. Yes, without backtracking or looking ahead. Yes. yes. Okay, what does it mean here? As a listener, now we are talking about listening uh, skill. If I want just to understand, it doesn't mean that I have to focus from the beginning till the end, because here I need just to, to have the gist. The main, the main, the main thing to be said. Okay. So without backtracking, it means that I'm going to repeat the speech. I'm not going to say uh, uh, to the speaker, repeat what is said totally from the beginning till the end. This is backtracking. Or going ahead to go to the end of the speech. So I need just to what uh, to listen, paying attention to what is important because I cannot catch up every word, every sentence to be said by the speaker. So without backtracking, uh, uh, without going back to the beginning of the speech, or ahead, going to the end of the speech, this is the idea. Backtracking and going ahead. Yes, it is clear. Thank you so much. It's okay. Any other question? Okay, thanks a lot, uh, students. And uh, let me remind you that today at 8 p.m. we have a discussion of the reports for the students whose names are mentioned. This is one. Uh, second, you have to know that the report with the discussion have 20 marks. 20 marks. 10 for the uh, report, 10 for the discussion. Those students who did not discuss, it means they lost I mean, so many marks, okay? So the idea here, when, once the, the student is discovering that his name is found, he should prepare this uh, in advance and he should participate. Otherwise, it will affect on the average, okay? Okay, Victor. Okay, uh, the, the other point, the other point to be said, what is said now uh, will be very important at the beginning of the coming lecture. I'm going to ask you about the, the points that are raised today since we are still in um, the same chapter, that is uh, speaking skill. Anyway, thanks a lot.